Good evening. Tonight I am here to talk about getting rid of duplicate photos on your computer. And boy, duplicate photos are such a pesky problem. I can't believe how they proliferate. Like they're just copies of pictures everywhere. So it's a really important part of the uh, photo organization process to have a duplicate finder. And I'm here tonight to talk about this topic because I'm not sure a lot of people know that there are duplicate finding programs out there that can really help even automate the process so it's less stressful in the long run. All right, so what we are going to cover tonight is a few things. I am going to give you a bit of background on duplicate photo finders. I'm going to talk about where you can find duplicates on your computer and other places. I will also give you some tips for deduplicating pictures. And lastly, I will talk about four duplicate four duplicate binding programs. Now, you really want to think about um, learning something tonight, but not, not being dangerous with what you know, okay? And I often find that when people dive into working with programs, um, they, they, it helps to have a few tips. And so that's my role here. Now, for those of you who don't know me, my name is Molly Bartelt, and I am the co-founder of Pixology. And photo estate planner, and I help people feel confident and motivated in organizing their pictures. So if you are here on YouTube, if you give the video here a thumbs up and maybe even subscribe, it will help more people find um, the information that I'm offering and may be of use to them as well. And if you're on Facebook, I invite you to check out the other resources that I have on our YouTube channel. Now, um, if you're here tonight, I'd love for you to say hi and let me know how many duplicate photos you think you might have. I'd be curious. I can tell you I'm working with about 45,000 digital pictures on my computer and I am in the midst of a little bit of a photo organizing project myself. And I'm pretty certain at least 12,000 of those are duplicates. So you are not alone if you have this problem, okay? So let's give a, a little bit of background, all right? And this is what I'm gonna say is, we have duplicate pictures all over the place in Google, iCloud and Apple Photos. We probably have them in folders on our computers, maybe in our downloads folder or in our pictures uh, folder and other places as well on your computer. You probably have old backups of your pictures on external drives or USB drives. You may even have old computers that you are afraid to get rid of because there's pictures on them. And most likely you have phones that have photos on them and they may be duplicates or maybe they were transferred over. The question is, is do you really know? <laughs> we also know there are CDs and USB drives of photos in our drawers. And of course, there are pictures that have been shared. They're on social media. They might be in text messages and emails. Pictures are all over the place. And when thinking about getting rid of duplicate photos, I really think that it involves more than just running a duplicate photo finding program, okay? Now, before I dive into that, I definitely wanna say hi to John who is, says hello. So thanks so much for joining, John. I hope that you learned something tonight new that maybe you didn't know. And, uh, and I look forward to hearing what you think. All right. And anyone else who wants to say hi, that'd be awesome. Just drop a hi in the comments and let us know you're here. So when looking at deduplicating photos, you really want to know which photos you want to save. And hello, Diane. Thank you for joining as well. I'm glad you're here tonight, too. So um, 
knowing which photos you want to save is really important. So first of all, you do want to save the originals if at all possible, okay? These are your largest size files and usually they will have the correct metadata, usually they'll have the correct metadata, especially the date taken. So, so important. <laughs> and I think it's really important to have folders on your computer that you, you know, know are the original photos. So the way I teach to do this is you want to have a master folder on your computer. So I just have a screenshot here that says master family photos. Okay. And um, you can see I have photos organized by decades here. And if we went into each of those folders, there would be year folders as well. This happens to be the set of photos I know are clean. There, there's no duplicates in there. And it's helpful to have that because anything else I compare against this will be the duplicates if they are in both places, okay? So knowing which photos you wanna save is really important. Now, the next thing, whenever you use a, a deduplicating program, you are going to want to aim for smaller batches of photos, okay? You do not want to load 35,000 pictures into a duplicate finder. Um, it will take a long, long time to run, and <laughs> trashing the duplicates will be kind of scary if you're going to just categorically trash 15,000 pictures, I'd be a little worried that you might lose something in there. So uh, we want smaller batches. It also allows us to fine tune uh, and look at what problems that we have with our digital pictures and figure things out. So smaller batches is good. And I did just put a um, screenshot up here. This happens to be a program that I'll be talking about later, duplicates Photos Fixer Pro, and you can see I, I am loading in 36,000 pictures. That takes a while. And then it has to load them in, and then you end up with 13,000 <laughs> duplicates here. And I can see this at the bottom of this screenshot, the resulting scan shows me I have 13,156 duplicate photos in 5,832 groups. That means that's how many sets of duplicates, because sometimes you could have three or four copies of the same photo if you have them in multiple locations, right? So they're grouping, and you can see like this first group has three pictures in it, all right? So there is no way to manage 13,000 duplicates, I mean, to scroll through and kind of eyeball all of this would take forever. So we want to focus on small groups, all right? And I like comparing year to year. So what we're looking at here is a screenshot on the left-hand side are my 2014 photos that I downloaded from Google because at one point I used an Android phone, okay? And uh, if we were to you know, look where on my computer this folder is, the Google 2014 photos. It's in my Google downloads and it's in my photos to organize folder, okay? On the right-hand side, we're looking at my good copy of my 2014 photos, all right? On the right-hand side, this 2014 photos folder is in my 2010s photos, and this is uh, located in my master family photos folder. So I am looking at two different folders and they're relatively small batches. If you look down at the bottom, you can see 207 items in Google and you have 849 items in uh, the, the, uh, the pictures in my master photos folder, okay? So there is um, an example of comparing year to year, and I'll actually demonstrate this in a little bit. So um, in the next view here, I do have a screenshot just showing that when I ran 
the duplicate photos fixer on this little area, I found 198 photos in 99 groups. That is so much easier than um, going through 13,000 pictures. All right. And when you work with a smaller section, auto marking becomes easier. And that's my next tip. When you're using a photo management program, you have the ability to auto mark or select things for deletion. It makes it more automated so that you don't have to click off on every single duplicate you want to delete. All right. So um, in the next screen here I have, you're going to use this auto mark or auto select feature to select photos for deletion. I like to designate certain folders for priority or protection. And then I also want to select the larger file size, okay? So um, in this next screen is just a quick example of how the selection assistant in Duplicate Photos Fixer Pro works. I have the selection priority of the folder listed there. And if we clicked on the folder tab right in the, the center there, you would see that my master family photos folder has the priority and will not be marked for duplicate or will not be marked for deletion. OK, so those are you usually have an area where you can tell the program which pictures you want to delete. All right. So those were my um, just a few tips with using any sort of duplicate photo finder program, okay? And I do just want to hit the right button there and mention, um, you know, those tips are that they really just help you kind of narrow down how you're gonna start, okay? So smaller batches, you're gonna use the auto mark and have a, a set batch of pictures you know is good to compare to, okay? So before I dive into a couple of the duplicate photo finding programs that we've experimented with, I just want to mention that um, John uh, is using Photo Sweeper on his iMac. And I love Photo Sweeper. It was the first duplicate photo finding program that I used. And I think it's great. So I'll be talking about that in a, in a, a few minutes. And then Rob mentions that the raw picture is usually larger than the JPEG. And he, he wants to save the JPEG too, since it's the processed corrected image. And some duplicate finding programs would want us to delete the JPEG. And he says, no. And I, there actually is a good point here, okay? So when you think about which pictures you wanna keep and which ones you wanna delete, you have to kind of be thinking about this in advance. Now, the programs that I've seen do have options where you can rule out some of the files that you do not ever wanna delete. And that gets kind of into some advanced work, um, you know, into the, the settings that you're going to go into. But for those of you who don't know, raw photos are pictures that were taken on a DSLR camera. They're, you know, kind of high end professional photographers. And I think photography enthusiasts, enthusiasts use these kind of cameras and they have raw pictures. They make very large files, but it's the easiest to edit those files because there's so much data that the camera collects when taking a picture. And the raw file, you know, people really prefer to use that if they're in photography and other graphic arts businesses. So for the consumers that I meet, we usually don't worry about raw files, um, but it is something to be aware of. And sometimes your duplicate finder might say, <laughs> we don't work with raw files. So it's just, uh, it depends on what you're using your pictures for, okay? And definitely, um, Raw files would be much larger than the JPEG. So um, you wouldn't want to, if you've worked on editing that raw file, you'd want to keep both of them. But I have a feeling that you're probably managing your pictures in a different way. And maybe you wouldn't need a duplicate finder in, in the first place. I would be curious to, to know that, Rob. So, 
So thank you for sharing that. And um, that leads me to be talking now about a few different duplicate photo finding programs. And I want to you to be sure that when you are looking at a, a, a program, that it's the photo finding program, not the file finder, okay? We are looking for software that is duplicate photo finding, not duplicate file finding. The way these two different types of programs work, they display the pictures completely different if it's a file finding program. That's a lot of file words in there. And I, I don't want to be like repetitive about it, but you want the photo finding <laughs> programs. Okay. So with that being said, I was really surprised to learn how many duplicate photo finding programs are out there. There are some that are really complicated and, um, you know, they, they look really technical. There are some that are free and you can search online for like the top 10 duplicate photo finding programs. I'm going to just share the four that I have familiarity with, some familiarity with, and we'll start right off with uh, going back to <laughs> sharing my screen so you can write this down if need be. So um, Photo Sweeper for Mac. For those of you who use a Mac computer, Photo Sweeper is fantastic. It was the first program that I used. I think I mentioned that. On a Mac, um, you can go to the App Store and purchase it for $10. It is like the easiest $10 to spend ever because it makes looking for the duplicates wonderful. Photo Sweeper for Mac will compare folders and your iPhoto library. So you have a lot of options with it for the, the $10. You can also go online on the website and download a free version of it as well. If you go to the Photo Sweepers, um, uh, you search for it online and then go on to the website instead of purchasing it right away through the App Store. All right. Next, I'm going to talk about this one, All Dupe for PC. Now, I actually haven't tested this one yet, and in this um, video tonight, I am not recommending necessarily one program or the other. I haven't done a full review of each of them, okay? I have used the other three that I'll be talking about, but all dupe, I haven't reviewed this or tried it yet because I actually just found it today, and I wouldn't even put it up here. <laughs> But I found it on PC World, and the author had tested it himself, okay? And the article, I think, was just in February. So I felt, all right, it's current. He likes it. Um, I'm not sold on it because look at it. <laughs> it looks really technical, and you don't really get to see the pictures. And he's not really using... Um, uh, family photos in this example. On the right-hand side, he's got three duplicates. One's a bitmap, one's a JPEG, and one's a PNG. And they're all of something I really can't even tell what that is. The point is, is All Dupe for PC was highly recommended by this author in PC World. And I have the link there. And uh, he liked it. And it's free. So it's possible that this could be a good solution for you if you don't mind the technical nature of how it looks to work, okay? So that's all dupe for PC. Next, this program's called Duplicate Photo Cleaner. And we have used this at Pixology on and off for a couple years, and it has helped us remove duplicates, uh, especially in scanned photos. So for those of you who have printed pictures that maybe you have scanned, you can run the duplicate finder on scanned photos as well. And it's really invaluable because we organize thousands of printed pictures here um, every month and running the duplicate finder helps ensure that we catch the duplicates that we didn't catch in the physical organization. So so anyway, Duplicate Photo Cleaner is an option out there. It is about $39.95, I think, per month, and I could not find um, like a coupon for it. With this program, 
There is an annual fee, so it renews, and you might be lucky to find a link where the program is just a one-time fee, but you want to be aware of that. And so we have liked it. They keep updating it, and so sometimes the interface changes, and I haven't used it as much in the last six months. So it's an option out there that you can test, okay? You can actually download the, this one for free and try it out. Then uh, Duplicate Photos Fixer Pro is one I have been using, and I've been teaching some, um, some of my clients uh, how to use this as well. And it is normally, I think, $39.95 a month. And if you email their support, support at systweek.com, you can get 50% off. And uh, they told me to tell you that you just mentioned you saw the discount in uh, the video on YouTube and, and they'll send it your way. So it becomes like $20. Maybe there's tax on there too. And it is recurring. So you'll want to remember to email them to discontinue it if you finished using it. Now, Duplicate Photos Fixer Pro uh, looks a lot like Photo Sweeper. It works on both PC and Mac. Um, we just use it on the PCs here. I have it on my Mac for testing purposes. And uh, I'm going to actually show you a quick demonstration of how this works, OK? So clicking on the. Next is the quick demonstration, which means I have to stop sharing that and do a new share. And you just have to bear with me while I find the sharing button. And now you've now you've got me on both computers here. So we're going to remove from there. Oh, oh. I have problems with technology too, even though this is what I do every day. So we're going to do share and go to share screen and click this. And here we are. Okay. So now you are looking at Duplicate Photos Fixer Pro. And I'm going to actually go full screen on this so you can see. I have loaded in here on the top Master Family Photos 2014 photos. And I have also loaded in the Google 2014 photos. I had showed you this screenshot earlier. And all I have to do is I uh, click scan for duplicates. So it's going to load in about 1,000 pictures. And it found 198 duplicates right there. See down in the bottom, it says 198 duplicate photos in 99 groups. We actually saw this on the screenshot just a bit ago, okay? And I am going to go to the selection assistant. This In this program, they call it selection assistant. And you can see I have the folder as the top priority for marking pictures. So mark with folder priority. Here's that file formats tab, and um, I'm not, I haven't really looked into that. I think there's only JPEGs in this fold in these folders, and that's why that's all that's listed there. Under the folder, you can see the master folder is on top. And down here, that little asterisk says that duplicate photos in folders with high priority will not be marked for deletion. So my photos are safe in the master family photos. And then there is this protected folder. I have to tell you that I'm going to just come on screen for a quick second here. That protected folders has tripped me up. When I make the master family photos be protected, it actually won't auto mark anything for me. So my little hack, my workaround is to not have protected folders, okay? Let's bring this back on and let's just see, why are we not showing the marked on our screen here? We want to um, go back to, oops, right there. And I want the selection assistant and it's not showing. So I have to do a new share. Isn't that funny? You just think you're you're actually sharing the right thing and then the computer um, does this to you every time. So 
this is kind of why sometimes I say, oh, it's just that <laughs> I should. It's why sometimes I say, why do I do this stuff live? Screenshots always works better for me. So anyway, we're going to do a new share here. And I'm just going to share the whole screen. So let's stop. Share screen. Stop. Screen. And then share. Share screen. Entire screen. So... <laughs> We're going to quick minimize that. And now you can see the selection assistant. Thank goodness. Okay. All right. So let's put you back up on uh, full screen here. So now we're in this full, <laughs> full screen. And you can see I have the selection priority is the folder. And then the folder here is um, master family has the priority. And then there's a protected folder. I have that turned off because for whatever reason, it, it just doesn't work as well. So I know that my fa master family photos will be the ones that are not marked. So I'm going to click mark. Incidentally, if you wanted to you know, change your mind, you can unmark up, unmark them all at the top and then auto mark again. It prompts you to open the selection assistant if you want. And so here my pictures are marked. Now I want to show you a few things that um, are really important. Remember when I said you need to know which pictures you want to delete? I knew my master family photos was the good set of pictures. So by selecting this picture, the top left here, my husband and son in the pool, I can see down in the bottom middle here, it says, uh, the path, all right, I can see these are the pictures in my master family photos, all right, this picture is in that 2014 photos folder that I want to be saved. I also can see that it's 1.12 megabytes, so it's not that big of a file, all right, but it's still over a megabyte and that makes a good, a good photo print if I want. The one on the right is 736 kilobytes, okay, it's the same picture but it has a different name on it. And then that's what happens is your pictures get uploaded to various places and saved and the names can be different, but duplicate photo finding programs will find pictures even if that information's different, okay? Now, another interesting thing to note here is that uh, this picture is from Google Photos. I don't know if you remember, but this was my Google downloads. Google compresses pictures when they're uploaded to Google Photos, the Google Photos app. And this picture, I think, was originally taken. And I can look on the right-hand side here. I see the capture date was 2014. And back then, I had an Android phone, um, which I think I mentioned before. So Android phones upload pictures to Google Photos, and they may end up being compressed. And that is what happened here. So back in the day, 2014, I had the foresight to save my pictures from my phone to my computer, and I had the full version file, all right? Uh, now, when I went to download those pictures from Google, Google just to double check that I had them, I can see that Google c compressed it. So that's, we care about file sizes and where the pictures came from and keeping track of that's really helpful. So by being able to look at two folders from 2014, it was really easy for me to auto select. Now they're all marked and all I have to do is click delete marked, click okay. And then that folder has been cleaned out of its duplicates. And I love it. It's so easy. <laughs> and that is the beauty of a duplicate photo finding program. Okay. So we are going to just come back up here. And if you have questions about um, duplicate finding, you can definitely drop it in there. I know sometimes we actually get to talking about... Um, you know, ways of working with your pictures and people are overwhelmed. You know, there's a lot of factors that go into organizing pictures. A duplicate photo finding program is essential if you're dealing with pictures that you have accumulated over decades of time, okay? 
So I wanted to just let you know, I'm here to help. If you have questions, you can, uh, you can contact me. I'm going to drop my email in the comments here for you. And we have other videos on the YouTube channel. I invite you to check out. And we are also doing one last call for my live eight-week course. I have a, a link for setting up a calendar time. And I can't stress to you how much, how important it is to just get started on working with your pictures because tomorrow might literally be too late. And I, I want to be here and help you on the journey if you need it. So that is it for now. I don't see any other questions. And um just know you can reach out and I'll be happy to answer them maybe on a future call. Thank you so much for tolerating my rambling and getting through this. We'll see you. Bye-bye.